1st John 7 and 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Bashem Akakadash. The bond to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Much respect to you, brothers out there. Let's preach this word in truth and sincerity. Stand tall, stand boldly. For the name of Yahweh Bashem outside, the light scatter abroad, and the speck bird, and one say shalom. I'm be I'm, I believe I'm going to title this lesson The Christian Church Still Cannot Get This Right. And I say that because uh, this picture right here. <laughs> you know I mean just look at this mess man alright you got light skinned Jesus <laughs> who the world calls Jesus okay which he's pretty much still in the image of Caesar Borgia okay he got the long hair pretty much he, he got that wig on a woman's wig on all right, looking effeminate as hell. Got the woman angel. And it's completely going off. And it's not according to scriptures. Okay. If you're going to pick Jesus, right? Yahweh Shah, right? Okay. His real name is Yahweh Shah because there was no letter J in the time that Yahweh Shah lived. Okay. Letter J is what, about 600 years old? Yahweh Shah in the time that he dwelt was about 2,000 years ago. So you do the math. They were not calling him Jesus. And he certainly wasn't walking around looking effeminate. Okay? And this is why our people got to wake up. Those that are meant to wake up, got to wake up out of their sleep. And that's why we break down the scriptures and give you the word, how the word is properly meant to be given unto you. So you understand that when you know what Yahweh Shah actually looked like and that he was an austere man, that you would get out of these Christian churches and rise up and come into your true nationality. Okay? So this is pretty much going to be a quick win. All right? Let's get... Um, give me one second. Let me pull it up. It was 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of power. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. So men out here being effeminate, they're not going to make it. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Okay? Men with men, women with women, they're not going to make it. And these Christian churches, they can't get it right. Clearly going off, depicting Yahweh Shai in the wrong light. Making them look effeminate like that, man. And that was probably for Easter or something like that. You know, we got to go, go according to scriptures. Okay? Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of a by outside. So you're not gonna get it. Okay, you're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get in the kingdom of heaven. One, you're preaching that the law is done away with. And you're depicting Yahweh Shah in the wrong light. And you're perpetuating um, you know, this wickedness to our people. All right, yeah, so it's just playing the super. You're not going to get it. So I'm going to read um, John 7 and 38 again. It's <clears throat> like you. This is John 7 and 38. 
He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you wake up out of your sleep. The Lord puts that flesh upon your dry bones. And you'll understand this word and get built up in the spirit. And the people can see your light. Okay. And now I'm going to show a couple of scriptures, the true depiction of our Lord Yahweh Shah. All right. I said, this is pretty much a quick one. Um, get Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation 1 and 1, the revelation of Amashiach Yahweh Shah, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which shortly it's like it was things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Okay. So this is the revelation of a Mashiach Yahweh Okay. Before I get that, I'm going to get um, verse three. Bless is, bless is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy, so you're reading, reading for yourself, and you hear the words of this prophecy, and, and you understand the, uh, uh, what's going to come to pass, and understand what I'm about to bring out. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So you do the things which is pleasing unto Yahweh by Shema Okay? Because we're coming into the time where if you don't have the covering of Yahweh Bashim outside, that's it. You're done for. Okay? You're done for. So let's get Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the pets with his girdle, golden girdle. Okay? His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Okay? The hair on his beard and the hair on his head was white as snow. White as wool. Okay? Not no long hair going down his back. Alright? This is the revelation of Amashiach Yahweh And his eyes were were as a flame of fire. Okay. And his feet likened unto fine brass. So fine brass. Brass a derivative of brown. And let's see what happens to this brass. As if they burn in the furnace. Okay. You put that brass, which is already a derivative of brown, and you put it in the furnace, what's going to happen to it? It's going to get burnt. It's going to get dark. So no, Yahweh Shah was not a light-skinned brother. All right? <laughs> you know, he was still a brother, but he, he was a very dark-skinned man with a very deep voice, and he was loud, as we read here. And his voice as the sounds of many waters. Okay? So he would most likely look more like this, okay? See him coming down with his great wrath and anger, okay? And every eye is going to see him, and I'm going to bring that up, okay? He will look more like this. Now, we're not saying that he looks exactly like this, but we're just saying that he will look more like this. All right, dark skin, white woolly hair, okay, a white beard, not no long woman's wavy hair going down his back and looking effeminate, okay? So let's get um, Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. So he's coming back with great anger. 
All right? Because you Christians got to pay. <laughs> Believe it or not, you Christians got to pay. Matter of fact, let's get that scripture. Um, before I get the one that I wanted, let's get a Leviticus 20. And it's like, yeah. 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. The blood shall be upon them. So no effeminate man is going to come into the kingdom of heaven. All right. No manly butch woman is going to come into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Only the elect is going to be worthy. And it's only going to come into the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And we're just reading this out of the Bible, man. Matter of fact, um, <clears throat> I just thought about it. I meant to get more precepts. Let's get Daniel 10 and 5. All right. To get more precepts of what Yahweh Shai look like. Okay. Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold and euphaz. His body also was like the barrel. All right. Wearing a green garment. And his face as the appearance of lightning, having that power around him. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Okay, he's an austere man. All right. And his arms and his feet like the color to polish brass and the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude. So once again, it's saying that he's his, his skin was as brown, you know, polished brass. And he had a, a, a deep, loud voice. OK. I mean, you got to have a deep, loud voice when you're preaching to the multitude. All right. He's an austere man, a man among men. Not no weak, effeminate man like these Christian churches portray him to be. OK. The Christian church obviously cannot get it right because they still showing them, you know, they show him as a brother, but. As a feminine brother, okay. If you're gonna show him, show him near to his true depiction, all right. So let's get um Isaiah 66. Let's get uh, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and fury and his rebuke of flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword and by his sword will the Lord, Yahweh will plead with all flesh and the Lord, a slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay. This is a men among men, an austere man. Not no effeminate man coming down here with a little dress on, wearing pink, long hair, uh, uh, brown hair, blue eye, <laughs> Edomite looking man. No. All right. It's our king of kings coming back down here with great anger. All right. Not no weak, effeminate man, a man among men. All right. Verse 17, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination in the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So this is a reason why these Christian churches have to be punished. All right. They preaching that the law is done away with and that you can eat pork, shrimp, crab and lobster. All right. 
And we can clearly see that this is a future prophecy. And if you've eaten pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, that you're going to clearly be destroyed by the Lord. Okay? So it's just plain and simple to those who can see it. Matter of fact, let's get um, Matthew 13, 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why thou speakest unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. All right, so the Lord is only dealing with the elect, and only the elect is going to get it. Okay, only the elect is going to get it. All right. Well, let me get, um, it's like, yeah, there was one more scripture I wanted to get, and I can't think of it right now. Um, man, I can't think of it right now. It's like it, y'all. <laughs> I had a scripture in mind, and I can't think of, of what it was. Um... Oh, oh, yes. Now I remember. Slack here. There we go. Matthew 5 and 17. Okay, this is Yahweh Shah speaking. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. So anything that the prophets said, like we just read in Isaiah. And he said, I came not to destroy the law. So the law still stands. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill, to fulfill everything that the prophet said in prophecy. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all is, it's like it to all be fulfilled. All right. So heaven and earth is still here. All right. And he said, not one jot, no one tittle. All right. No wise pass from the law. So you got to keep the law to the best of your ability. Now, we understand that the law does not save us. But keeping the law to the best of our ability. And, and having faith. All right. That's all we got. Having faith that the Lord is going to deliver us out of all our troubles, save us from our enemies. Right. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. Right. Got the Christian churches doing that. Depicting Yahweh Shai as a feminine man and not an austere man and not his true depiction and telling you that you, you can eat pork, shrimp, crab and lobster. Telling you that the law is done away with. Let's read it again. Whosoever therefore shall break one of, the, one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall be, so like it, whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. All right. So you teach men. To keep the law to the best of your ability and you're doing it yourself you're going to be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven if you endure to the end and have faith but these pastors all right they're not going to endure to the end and they're going to be the lowest in the kingdom of heaven all right um matter of fact let's get daniel 12 and i'll I think I'm going to close out on that. All right. <clears throat> Man, what the hell? All right, this is Daniel. Oh, I like this. All right, this is Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time, shall Michael stand up. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never uh, uh, was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time 
thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. So this time of trouble is closely approaching. And only the elect is going to get out of it. All right. And many of them that sleep in the dust and the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. The elect is going to wake up to everlasting life. The two thirds that die on this side. Okay. They're going to have their heads down when they get reborn in the kingdom because they understand that they were going off in their past lives. And they follow Esau Edom. And they didn't believe what the prophet said. Okay. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and forever. I want to give all praises going on to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushua, Bashem, Akagadash, the bonds to apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Much respect to you, brothers out there, just preaching this word in truth and sincerity. Laura's will. Hopefully, this was an edifying lesson. And until next time, Shalom.